This is me, four years ago, stuck with my calisthenics skills. If someone had given me the advice, just get bigger muscles, stop the statics and go back to the pull-ups after I had just focused on my basics and weighted basics, I would have been stuck there forever. Fast forward four years and with the right approach that I'm gonna teach you in this video, you also will be able to increase the likelihood that you progress to this level in calisthenics and get those skills you've been dreaming about. But first, let me explain how this first approach that some of you are probably following can lead you permanently stuck with calisthenics and ultimately quitting. This first not so great approach we'll call the Zenit method. Zenek Latal is a calisthenics content creator that has been creating calisthenics content for the last two years, but has recently gained traction for his calisthenics documentaries on calisthenics legend. I really like these videos and they're really well edited. But his calisthenics tip and tutorial videos have an extremely dark side, a bad approach to training that some of you guys are following that can leave you stuck. Here's why. He explains his approach to training the Zenek method in this video. My calisthenics transformation to legendary level begins where he attempts to explain how he plans on learning the front lever. So first goal, big muscular upper body or at least something bigger than my dream physique that I am aiming for is the one that Daniels has or for example, Ian Barstides. Now on the surface, this Zenit method doesn't sound too bad, right? Some of you guys will also have the same approach, but let me explain why the way he's doing this has some serious problems. And if you follow this as well, you will encounter these issues. Now, before I get ahead of myself, let me say this. If you're new to calisthenics, you should start with basics to gain muscle and strength. Don't forget that second part. It's not only hypertrophy, hypertrophy, hypertrophy. And then after this, work on your weighted basics to progress even further. Now we know Zenek isn't a beginner because in this video, he says he can do 32 push-ups and 16 pull-ups. And by the end of his training in this video, over a month, he can do about 40 push-ups. I think about 20 pull-ups. This means he's not a complete beginner. And if his goal is skills such as the front lever, he should be moving on to harder elements such as weighted basics. But really guys, this Zenic method doesn't sound too bad, right? There's worse things you could be doing than focusing on building muscle, right? Well, let me go over the four problems you'll encounter if you only focus on hypertrophy and your end goal is static strength skills. But first, there's something I need to bring up and it's something that Zenic might not be credible in giving advice on these skills because he's been stuck with the front lever and planche for six years. Simultaneously while doing YouTube, I did guys things too. And still after six years, I couldn't do a front level. Now, the Zenit method doesn't sound too bad, right? I mean, there's worse things you could be doing than just focusing on building muscle and ignoring strength, but there's four problems you will encounter if you only focus on hypertrophy and you ignore building strength. As I mentioned, Zenit's approach is to first build a top 1% physique before seriously touching statics or skills at all. Now, nothing wrong with having a goal physique in mind. I had a goal physique when I started, but how long do you think it will take to get close to that goal physique? It won't just take a couple weeks or months, let's just say that. Now, with that said, if he waits to completely achieve this physique before he even touches skills, how long do you think that will be and how much time do you think would have passed? Not to mention, because he's just working on hypertrophy, he's not focused on strength, he will just have the muscle but it won't necessarily be strong. Hopefully now you guys can start seeing the first few issues with the Zenic method. Not to mention, if he waits to get to this goal physique, then starts training for planche, he'll have to work on his straight arm conditioning. And increasing the strength and integrity of your tendons takes much longer than building muscular strength. So who knows how long it would even be before he would be conditioned for the skills he wants to train. We've all seen skinnier looking people performing crazy strength movements such as planche and Maltese, while bodybuilders who have large amounts of muscle can't easily do these skills. Why? I think a lot of you guys already know that's the difference between strength and hypertrophy. A big muscle is not necessarily strong. A bigger muscle means a greater capacity for strength, but doesn't necessarily mean it is strong. You still need to train the strength. And you'll see this by this equation that you'll come across in Stephen Lowe's book, Overcoming Gravity. And of course, these Skinnier looking guys performing planche are strong, but they're not as strong as strong men lifting hundreds of kgs of weight because there's a difference between absolute strength 
and relative strength. When calisthenics, we're focused on strength relative to your own body weight. Most of you guys know this, but in Zenic's approach, it for some reason ignores it. But, but Zenic, all I see are skinny guys doing full multis basically without any muscles. So how is that possible? <laughs> Gary! <laughs> you just got again fooled by the internet. <laughs> I bet you didn't search more information about those guys. Because if you would, you would find out that these guys are literally 5 foot 6. For my European friends, 167 centimeters. <laughs> so of course they will look skinny, but actually they are muscular for their height. If you will check out any taller athlete, he will have insanely huge muscles. So for all you 6 foot 2 guys like me, you won't planche without having biceps as big as planet. You won't, trust me. Now Zenek's explanation for why these skinnier looking guys or hobbits as he calls them in his videos are able to perform hard strength movements like the planche and Maltese is not because of their strength relative to their body weight. No, he believes it's because they're all small so the muscle that they have just looks like it's not a lot but for their height it is a lot. There is a tiny ounce of truth in that statement but it shows an extremely poor understanding on how to build strength. Here is Mr Wong that is incredibly lean but is not the biggest athlete in terms of overall muscle mass but can still perform insane strength movements like the planche and Maltese and is not a hobbit as Zenek would call it. Zenek would probably reply to this by saying he is an exception to the rule, not the rule, but we'll discuss that later. Sadly, if you are born with naturally fattier, longer or I don't know what else legs, then your limit, what you can achieve in calisthenics, is already lower. What he just said isn't true. As someone who has big legs, all that big legs means is that you'll need more strength to lift up your legs. That's it. Of course, lighter legs will make these lever skills easier but it doesn't mean certain skills are out of reach unless you're abnormally disproportional or you're kind of hitting your limit in terms of your strength due to other factors such as your diet you can't get enough food in for whatever reason you don't have the time to keep training or you're kind of getting older things like that can affect your training but it's not because you just have big legs you just need more strength that's it if you follow Zenex's advice is you're going to be ignoring specificity. Specificity is a fundamental strength principle that all other strength disciplines follow, whether it's gymnastics, powerlifting, whatever it may be, if you're trying to gain strength, they're going to be following specificity to a large degree. All this means is you want planche? Well, you need to eventually train planche to get planche. Obviously, you wouldn't rush it. You would start with the easier progressions, of course, all that jazz. But of course, if you want planche, you need to train it. Zenex's approach and advice doesn't mention this so if you're past the basics you're not a beginner anymore you're doing your weighted basics you're gaining muscle and you're working on strength and you want skills later well start training specifically for the skills you want don't rush work at your level but you need to start if you do want those skills So for some reason, Zenek either doesn't know this or doesn't mention this to his audience, but it seems to be that he thinks that as soon as you start training just for statics, that you huh? cannot build muscle. That it just <laughs> doesn't happen. It just switches off sometimes. Your body just realizes, oh, I'm in a planche. I won't build any muscle. That's not the case. If you're doing enough sets, enough reps, and training hard enough, and you're doing certain exercises, especially dynamic exercises, you will put on some muscle. Of course, if your diet is right as well, you will put on muscle while training for statics. Training for statics also doesn't just mean holding static skills. You are doing dynamic movements as well. Of course, this won't be as much muscle if you are solely focused on building muscle, but you still will put on a few pounds over a couple months of training for a few hard calisthenic skills. That's exactly what happened with me. I was big sort of before as I came into learning statics, but I've gotten bigger as I keep focusing on harder and harder calisthenic static skills. All these points clearly show two things you've probably now gathered about Zenit. He has limited experience and limited knowledge on how to effectively train for static skills. Really not trying to be mean, but it's kind of clear that he has limited experience himself because he's been struggling with his own journey in calisthenic skills because he's been stuck for six years now. I'm not saying that means he has no knowledge because you can be a great coach and not have the skills that you're teaching and not actively be able to perform them, but it does add a real sense of credibility when you can perform the skills that you're discussing. But let's add on top of that, he doesn't have the coach level knowledge on how 
how to effectively train for these skills that he's trying to give advice for. So some of you may still disagree or not be completely convinced that Zenik has limited knowledge on how to effectively train for static skills. So let me explain to you why this is the case with my next point. He doesn't research or back up a lot of his advice with evidence and rarely does he show proof for what he's saying. If you notice, when you watch my content, such as this video, I will give you a point or something you should do or advice and I will give you the evidence shortly after to back up and substantiate what I said. I got into this habit because I did a PhD in synthetic biology and they literally drill that into you that if you say a point, you need to back it up. You can't just be saying random things and not back it up. That's why on my channel, you'll see so many case studies, conversations with high level athletes. So you can physically see the evidence for the thing I'm trying to say or the advice I'm giving. There's literally almost no downside to giving irrefutable evidence for your point. Zenek, on the other hand, sadly doesn't do this. Here's one example. One guy has an interesting video about it, and if I should make it shorter, he said pretty much this. Consuming protein is the same as consuming coffee, for example. Your body gets used to it. And so you should do one day of no protein at all. None. To start again fresh then, the next day. I don't know if this truly works, but at least it's an interesting idea. As you can see, no evidence, no backing up. He just says, this is an interesting idea. Why don't you know? Why don't you do the research before you made the video and gave the advice or gave people the idea? Because people or your audience are going to look at this and think, huh, there's probably truth to this because he's telling me he's put it in the video, like mesh between other decent advice. And then they'll probably see, you know, either it does work or doesn't work. I don't know because I haven't seen the evidence. So why not just do that? So that's the number one thing you can see already he's not researching the things he's saying. Here's another example. Why hypertrophy is bigger than strength training? It's because building muscle size takes more time than gaining strength. Where is he getting this from? Because this statement is very context dependent. If I wanted to go from a 100 kg deadlift to a 200 kg deadlift, you know, how long do you think that will take me? Quite a while, right? But if I wanted to put on just half a kilogram of mass, how long do you think that will take me? If I'm eating right and training right, most likely less time than going from 100 to 200 kg deadlift. And this point was the whole premise of his video and why he says to focus more on muscle compared to strength. That was the whole premise of his video. He doesn't back it up he doesn't give proof he just says it and then you're meant to take it at face value seeing things like this in his content time and time again as i've been reviewing it has led me to believe that he's just not checking the things that he's saying now you guys have seen the evidence for why zenek has limited knowledge on how to train for static skills why he has limited experience because he's been stuck with his own training all stemming from the fact that he doesn't research or back anything up. I think he's just been getting the wrong idea over and over the years and you don't want to be in the spot either. About two months ago, Zenik posted this video called Why CalSense Tutorials Are a Waste of Time. In this video, he goes around the problem of CalSense Tutorials, the problems of spam watching a lot of tutorials. With a lot of these points, I do agree with. I do agree there is an issue with CalSense Tutorials and watching too many of them. Let's say that Chris was the first one who did a frontline tutorial. Let's say he was. Then why all these guys did again pretty much the same video where they for 99% didn't say anything new. <laughs> And in this video, he claims he wants to be original on YouTube with his Castanets content. And I agree with both of these things because that's why I made my YouTube channel. I felt there were some things that were being said too much, some things that were never being said at all. So I wanted to give a different perspective in terms of my experience and learn in different ways, give a different approach, bring different athletes in that have never taught before about the sport to give new information, new perspectives and show content and motivate people in different ways, as well as showing the method that I use to learn static skills, which is quite unique, but still follows the fundamental strength principles. I'll link those videos at the end of this. One. But I want to show you guys this and tell me, does this seem original? This is a summary of all of Zenex Kastanets tip videos, not his opinion videos or videos just about Kastanets in general, but ones where he's trying to give advice and give tips for things. Ones that he's made in the last three months. I reviewed them all and put the main advice from each video, yet they're pretty much all the same, especially more recently. They're becoming very, very similar and he says he wants to make original content. Zanuck has ended up becoming what he hates, someone that just spews out the same information that everyone else is saying and just repeats the same points. But what you'll notice if you go to his channel and just look at the titles, 
you'll see they've slowly and slowly been becoming more and more negative about calisthenics. Another example where you can catch him being a hypocrite is in this video where he says working on your basics for high reps, which for him is around 20, is useless. Now, why is useless to be able to do 20 pull-ups? But then in this video, the whole point of the video is to learn and increase your pull-up reps so you can start learning calisthenic skills and static skills a lot faster. But you can at least boost yourself a little bit from time to time with this method I already did. So which one is it? Is working on your pull-ups to 10 to 20 useless or is that actually helpful for eventually learning static skills? Huh? It seems like he doesn't know himself and ends up saying contradicting things in different videos. And these are recent videos where one of them was only posted three weeks ago. So it's not even like I'm looking way back at two different videos that are years apart. These were posted, you know, this year within the last few months of each other. Zenit says himself in this video that he doesn't bring anything new to the table in terms of Cassian's tutorials. So he doesn't want to spam the platform with the same old information. That's why I stopped doing tutorials because I simply don't have anything new to bring to the table. I agree with that. I'm trying to do the same. I'm not just spam the same information. I want to bring a new take to calisthenics and these calisthenics tutorials. But instead, he's spamming the platform with the wrong information because he doesn't have the experience with these skills to actually talk about them from a new perspective. And it's much easier to pick apart the bad things about calisthenics rather than start working on building up new ones. Which leads me on to my next point. He's harming calisthenics. And this is where I need help from you guys. Zenek is learning the more negative he is about calisthenics, the more views he's getting. So he's more consistently making negative videos about calisthenics that aren't actually helping people. Such a talented guy that does make good stories and edits really well can do harm to the sport when he's just spreading negativity. And you can see it affecting how his audience actually thinks about calisthenics. And you can see it in his comments, they're becoming more and more negative about the sport. You can see this is causing real world change in a bad way. It's not just memes on the internet. Well, the answer is Daniel Wedner from Fitness FAQs. <laughs> he tried for many years to unlock not even a full planche, but just a straddle planche, which for today's standards is nothing. This is surprising since Zenek made his own video about social media and how it can be harmful, yet it seems like he's not taking his own advice because for some reason he thinks a straddle planche at 6 foot 2 is not impressive. He also implies body thenex is wasting their time on YouTube and should just quit. But you won't definitely get famous by doing tutorials. Just look at body Stenix channel. <laughs> I don't know why they already didn't quit YouTube. <laughs> now what can you guys do to help? Don't send hate. Don't send negativity. What you should do is when you see this kind of content pop up, you see that it's negative, don't play into it. Don't play into the negativity. Instead, try and be a bit more positive in the comments or just don't play into it. You don't have to comment something negative. Try and not to support people that are pushing this active negativity about the sport because it's not good for the overall health of the sport. So now we know that Zenek doesn't know much about training, doesn't really research, and is producing hypocritical negative content for his audience it seems to be the case that he just doesn't have much integrity. This is something I really care about because as a creator, all you have is integrity. If you don't have integrity, there's no reason people should trust you or listen to you. To prove he has very little integrity, I have to move on to my next point. Yes, it still gets worse. This is Zenex's video response to my video about planche grip. Here's what he says I said. Planche isn't about shoulder, tricep or bicep strength. <laughs> you are a silly if you thought that, because you will learn planche quicker, not by doing weighted dips or handstand push-ups, but thanks to how you will grip the bar. <laughs> Now let's take a look at what I actually say in my video. Not using this technique hack might be the reason why your planche progress is so slow and carrying on not using this technique will cause your planche form to become slowly and slowly worse. Zenek purposely misrepresented what I said in my video to make it seem like I'm talking nonsense and to reduce my credibility and integrity so that people, you know, just think I'm talking nonsense. He even hints that this is the purpose of the video because he says this in the video description. The rest of the video is literally just 
him twisting my words and misrepresenting me so bad that I believe that he is just lying for views. If you do want me to refute and respond to every point in his video, let me know. I'll post my full response in the comments of this video. He also misrepresented Andrew Strong's planche program because he didn't do enough research and Andrew Strong responded to Zenek in the comments saying this. I hope this video has been clear, concise, and most importantly, factual. I've tried to provide everything so you guys can come to your own conclusion. But lastly, guys, it gets even worse. I'm not even joking. This is what Zenek thinks of most modern women. In exchange, you will get a woman that is most likely totally brainless, with a poor personality, can't cook, can't do laundry. Do you know how to do your own laundry? No. <laughs> Basically, you will just throw your money out of the window. One YouTuber said, by getting this woman, you are just getting a replacement of your hand. <laughs> Personally, to me, that shows me what kind of person he is, that he groups a whole group of people like that. There's not much context, not much nuance to it. He just kind of groups everyone together like that. And to me, that is not okay. I don't care about the video you made about me. This is bigger than that. You're harming calisthenics, you're harming other people with the advice you're giving. But ultimately, the choice is up to you. Are you gonna choose to make more positive videos like your documentaries, make sure you're backing up the information, or are you gonna chase the views and build a cloud of negativity around calisthenics in the process? choice is yours.